with the Prime Minister, uh, both in the restricted and in the official delegation level formats. Earlier this morning, President CC was accorded a ceremonial reception at the forecourt of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, after which the External Affairs Minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, called on him. Uh, tomorrow, President CC will participate in the Republic Day Parade as the chief guest, as I said. Uh, and we will also witness participation of a contingent from the Egyptian armed forces in the parade. Uh, Vice President uh, of India will call on the visiting dignitary uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, President Sisi's visit as the chief guest on our Republic Day signifies the special and unique bonds of relationship, civilization linkages, uh, and shared struggle for freedom that India and Egypt have nurtured over the years. This year is also special in India-Egypt bilateral relations, as both countries are celebrating 75 years of establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries. As we have announced uh, some time ago, uh, India has also invited Egypt as a guest country during the G20 Presidency of India this year. Uh, High-level political engagements have been an integral aspect of our bilateral ties. Uh, this is the third visit of President Sisi to India. His first uh, was in October 2015 to participate in the third India-Africa Forum Summit. His second was in September 2016, which was also a state visit, and this one is his third. Earlier last year, uh, last quarter of uh, 2022, uh, we had three senior ministerial visits from India to Egypt. Uh, Raksha Mantri Sri Rajnath Singh Ji in September 22, EM Dr. Jay Shankar in October 22, and the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Shri Bhupendra Yadavji, in November 22 for COP27. And we have had return visits from Egypt of the Ministers of Communication and Information Technology earlier this month. Uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Sisi held extensive and productive discussions today, very warm, conversations, very warm interaction between the two leaders. They appreciated each other's role, not just in giving the driving momentum to the relationship, but also ensuring that the decisions that the two countries take are implemented in a time-bound and a quick fashion. Uh, discussions were on a whole range of bilateral issues, including on political security uh, elements, uh, trade, investment, technology, and other elements of economic partnership, and people-to-people -people ties. Uh, the highlight, uh, one of the key highlights of uh, uh, today's interactions uh, between the two leaders and the outcome of their discussions is the elevation of the bilateral relationship to strategic partnership comprising uh, essentially of four key pillars. The first pillar of political and security cooperation. Two, the whole segment of uh, economic engagement constitutes the second pillar. Three, the scientific and academic collaboration. And four, wider cultural and people-to-people -people contacts. Uh, President Sisi appreciated Prime Minister Modi's invitation to Egypt as a guest country for the G20. Both leaders agreed to work together during India's G20 presidency and reiterated, shared uh, their common interests and priorities, which uh, the Global South uh, should focus on and through the India's presidency could channel its priorities into the G20. If I could briefly touch upon each of the pillars of the strategic cooperation and how it figured in today's conversation and how it would be positioned uh, going forward in terms of bilateral relationship. The defense and security 
uh, element uh, of the strategic pillar, of course, comprised of defense. Uh, again, within defense, uh, there are uh, four or five sub-elements. Uh, each one of them sort of uh, uh, was highlighted during discussions. Uh, defense training, defense exercises, cooperation both in the fields of the platforms and the equipments, exercises, and also industrial partnerships between the two countries to forge a stronger base for defense partnership. In the uh, security domain, political and security domain, uh, counterterrorism, cyber security cooperation, and countering radicalization, uh, featured as three of the important sub-elements uh, of the discussions between the two leaders. Both leaders strongly condemned the use of terrorism by countries as a foreign policy instrument and called for zero tolerance to terrorism. And for all those who encourage, support, and finance terrorism, provide sanctuaries to terrorists and terror groups, whatever their motivation may be. Uh, given the commonality of challenges of terrorism that both India and Egypt face, the two leaders also emphasized the need for concerted and coordinated action uh, bilaterally between the two countries to see how our cooperation can become more broad-based, deeper in the field of uh, uh, terrorism, and how we can also together uh, join hands in the larger international platforms to ensure that uh, international community comes together to act against the challenge of terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Uh, one more element in the field of defense that I wanted to highlight, just even as we speak, a joint exercises, joint exercise of the special forces of both sides is called Cyclone 1 is uh, currently being held in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. Uh, also, for the first time, India has been invited for Egypt's tri-services exercises called Bright Star, which is to be held later in the, uh, last uh, in the, in the fourth quarter of, of this year, in September 2023. Coming to the uh, second pillar of uh, strategic partnership, the economic uh, engagement aspect. Uh, both leaders assessed, uh, one, the robustness in bilateral economic engagement, two, the dynamism, and three, its substance, uh, which covers the whole range of uh, uh, economic activity uh, of human endeavor. Uh, they appreciated that the trade quantum, uh, which currently stands at close to $7 billion, uh, in next few years would increase to uh, $12 billion. That's the target they fixed. Uh, and in this context, they also discussed ways to further intensify uh, trade-based economic engagement in the space of renewable energy, pharmaceuticals, infrastructure, IT, etc. Uh, naturally, uh, two-way investments, the capital flows between the two countries uh, also uh, figured as an important element of discussion. The two other elements uh, which, uh, on which the two leaders focused their attention and uh, pushed uh, uh, their systems to focus on, one was the uh, developmental template that uh, responds to the need of people uh, of each country, how there are learnings uh, uh, in our bilateral cooperation in this field. And uh, the other element, which is that how do societies like uh, the Indian society and the Egyptian society work together to uh, harness technology and intensify and deepen the interface between technology to meet developmental challenges. And I think there are significant uh, complementarities and learnings which the two leaders highlighted uh, for both uh, the Indian system and the Egyptian system uh, to take from each other. Uh, given the challenges of 
food, fertilizer, and energy that uh, uh, both India and Egypt uh, face. Uh, the two uh, leaders uh, uh, agreed in their discussions that the, the two countries will work together to ensure and build uh, supply chains which are reliable in the field of food, fertilizer, and energy, including, if required, uh, through government-to-government -government partnership, uh, whether it's in the field of food security or in the field of fertilizer security. Um, Prime Minister Modi, of course, uh, congratulated President Sisi for Egypt's successful hosting of the COP27 and for the uh, Sharm el-Sheikh declaration on loss and damage front. In the, in the scientific uh, and academic pillar of cooperation, the two leaders discussed how uh, the institutional engagements and partnerships across the wide set of areas uh, could be strengthened uh, between the two countries uh, and we could take it forward. Um, in the people-to-people -people exchanges, uh, uh, tourism uh, was highlighted as an important segment of uh, growing cooperation between the two countries. Direct air connectivity, uh, of which there is already uh, 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 a certain frequency which is there, but effort to increase it. And also uh, cooperation and uh, uh, in, in the field of uh, establishing museums which, which uh, showcase the cultures of both the countries. That was another element of uh, capacity building and institutional partnership uh, between the two countries, which, which was a focus of conversation today. Uh, finally, the two leaders also shared their perspective on uh, regional and global issues, including on multilateral cooperation. They touched upon the changing dynamics uh, in multiple regions of the world. Uh, of course, the derivative impact of uh, uh, the ongoing uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and its implications, as I mentioned earlier, on the food, fertilizer, and energy challenges that both our societies uh, face. Uh, the discussions uh, between the two leaders, as I mentioned earlier on, were extremely warm and productive, um, and both reaffirmed a uh, common understanding on the way forward in different areas of bilateral uh, relationship, of which I have highlighted uh, uh, some of them. Now, today, in a while from now, President Sisi will also interact with the Indian business community and later in the evening tonight, uh, the Honorable President of India would be hosting a state banquet for President uh, Sisi. Uh, in terms of the specific uh, deliverables which, uh, which were announced uh, during the visits and agreements were exchanged, um, there was one um, exchange of commemorative postage stamp on 75 years of establishment of bilateral diplomatic relations. And there were five MOUs uh, uh, in various areas, uh, including one uh, of, for cooperation uh, between CERT to CERT, uh, generic IT-based cooperation, media engagement, uh, and culture and youth matters uh, between the two countries. The joint statement, uh, which, is, uh, which is, have been agreed between the two countries, would be released uh, tomorrow evening after the conclusion of all discussions have uh, have taken place. Uh, I would end here, and if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll take questions. I see a lot of interest. Uh, please introduce yourself and the organization. Not you. I saw Pranay first. So today, Pranay, I'll, I'll come back to you. Sir, Pranay Upadhyay, ABP News. मेरा सवाल इस चीज को लेकर है कि इजिप्ट की इकोनॉमी इस समय काफी संकट के दौर से गुजर रही है तो ऐसे में हम जब इजिप्ट के साथ अपने रिश्तों को रणनीतिक स्तर पर ले जा रहे हैं और भारत के निवेश को बढ़ाने की बात कह रहे हैं प्रेसिडेंसी सी तो ऐसे में भारतीय निवेश के लिए सुरक्षा के क्या वो होंगी चीजें होंगी जो हम अपेक्षा कर रहे हैं और हमने इंश्योर की है आज की बातचीत में so 
two, uh, two questions. One is, uh, was there any talk about uh, space cooperation? Because Egypt has recently announced that it has a space agency, one. And two, in the, uh, in the agri sector, uh, <coughs> what, is, uh, what are the two countries wanting to do in the agriculture? What, sorry, in? Agriculture. Agriculture sector. So, Shridhar from the Asian Age, uh, we heard the Prime Minister say that both countries had endorsed uh, firm action to counter cross-border terrorism. So, was there any uh, discussion on Pakistan's uh, role in uh, sponsoring cross-border terror? And secondly, um, the, uh, you mentioned the uh, Egyptian interest in Indian defense platforms. Can, could you be a little specific on which platforms uh, they are particularly interested in acquiring? Thank you. Question, I follow. Sir. So I'm Sidhan from Vyond. My question is, how big is this a diplomatic victory for India in terms of its engagement with Egypt? India already has good relationships with Saudi Arabia and UAE. I'm asking this also because last year, in the backdrop of certain comments, it looked like that our relationship with many countries in West Asia might be impacted. So, I'll take next one. Sure. Thank you. Uh, इजिप्ट की आर्थिक समस्याओं को लेके और इन आर्थिक समस्याओं के मद्देनजर किस तरह से दोनों देशों के जो आर्थिक संबंध हैं उसमें जो निवेश के प्रश्न हैं उनको उनका उनको किस प्रकार से संचालित इसमें किया जाएगा देखिए जो जैसे कि मैंने अपनी प्रारंभिक टिप्पणी में भी कहा जहाँ तक आर्थिक भारत इजिप्ट आर्थिक संबंधों का प्रश्न है, उसकी जो उसके जो विभिन्न पहलू हैं, तो यदि आप व्यापार का पहलू लें, तो वो अपनी अच्छी गति और क्षमताओं के साथ अग्रसर है। जैसे कि मैंने बताया लगभग सात दशमलव दो बिलियन डॉलर का आज का व्यवस्थापित ट्रेड है और आगे आने वाले चंद वर्षों में ये अपेक्षित है और अनुमानित है कि ये लगभग 12 बिलियन डॉलर तक पहुंचेगा। निवेश की जो संभावनाएं दोनों देशों में हैं, वो एक तो जो सरकारी स्तर है उसपे भी होती हैं, लेकिन अधिकांश तया जो है वो जो निवेश निजी क्षेत्र में है, उसके हिसाब से होता है। uh, हम जब भी और हमारी इंडस्ट्री जब भी किसी देश में निवेश के प्रश्न देखती है तो वो आर्थिक इकोसिस्टम के उस देश के आर्थिक सिस्टम के हर पहलुओं के मद्देनजर में देखती है जहां तक मुझे ज्ञात है हमारी अभी तक की जो निवेश है उस इजिप्ट में लगभग 3.5 बिलियन डॉलर की है लगभग 3.54 बिलियन के डॉलर में और जो हमारी आ, हमारे संज्ञान में जो जानकारी है वो ये है कि आर्थिक संबंध निवेश संबंध व्यापार संबंध आ, तीनों की दिशा सकारात्मक है और न केवल सकारात्मक है अपितु सुदृढ़ भी है योर क्वेश्चन ऑन स्पेस कोऑपरेशन एंड देयर इज ऑलरेडी अ जॉइंट वर्किंग ग्रुप बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज in the field of uh, space cooperation. What we do expect as a country is that uh, the, the nature of dynamism in the field of space, whether it is the question of launch capabilities or it's a question of uh, building payloads, integrating the payloads with the launch capabilities, building of satellites, this is a f field and space on which there is enormous capacity which is available uh, in the Indian context. And uh, I'm sure going forward, those capacities will find a very uh, substantive link, uh, both for in the scientific domain, but also in the commercial space uh, for cooperation in the field of space. Uh, in the agricultural sector, as I mentioned to you earlier on, the su complete supply chain for the food and fertilizer security were, did focus as an element of discussion. As you know that uh, uh, one of the 
a cascading impacts of the Russia-Ukraine conflict has been on the global uh, supply of uh, food products and uh, food security has been impacted. So uh, the two leaders did discuss as to going forward what the two countries can do together so that the food security concerns are addressed. Prime Minister did speak very strongly that uh, uh, there are ancillary elements of the food sector, including in the food processing sector, uh, in which the private sector in India and the industry in India would be very, very keen to uh, cooperate. Uh, my colleague just also tells me that uh, uh, elements of uh, uh, trade in uh, uh, rice, non-basmati rice particularly, uh, and some other food products, uh, which are also a strong element of trade-based uh, linkage between India and Egypt, uh, also constitute uh, an important segment of the uh, cooperation in, uh, in this particular sector. Uh, uh, the question from Asian age uh, on, uh, on uh, counterterrorism and on the defense platforms. Uh, there was, the two leaders did spend some time uh, uh, in talking about this challenge, the nature of this challenge as it exists in, in uh, as, as both countries face it. Uh, some of the specifics of this challenge. Uh, given the nature and its specifics, what is it that the two countries can do together? Uh, what is it, uh, what specifics uh, areas can the two systems take forward in cooperating in a manner that the challenges that Egypt faces, for example, from its context, the challenges that we face in terms of our context. Uh, understanding how we address these challenges, not just at the level of the systems, but also at the level of the societies, uh, whether it's the challenge of radicalization, the spread of radicalization, um, and how different parts of the government come together talk about it, exchange their perspectives, uh, understand its dimensions, and then act to address those challenges in a comprehensive manner. The two leaders uh, did appreciate that this is uh, an important uh, security challenge for both the countries, both the societies, and they appreciated that uh, there, is, uh, no, there is a considerable uh, scope uh, and there is considerable leadership that the two countries' partnership in this field can provide for the rest of the region and for the world also. Uh, on the defense, uh, as I mentioned to you, there are multiple sub-segments of defense cooperation which, fevered, which featured uh, uh, during the discussions. Uh, uh, platforms, equipment, uh, uh, and the related linkages of how industries of the two countries will come together on some of the equipments and some of the platforms uh, uh, also did feature in the in the leaders' discussion. I think at this stage, uh, I would rather not get into the specifics of those, but uh, uh, when they looked at defense, they, they looked at it uh, uh, more from a strategic dimension rather than from a very transactional uh, uh, aspect of, of, of this one. Uh, Siddhant, your uh, question with regard to the uh, uh, how exactly is this is this visit seen? I think uh, if you look at our uh, India's cooperation uh, across uh, the, the whole uh, region in that part of the world, uh, you would actually find that uh, the extent of robustness, strength diversity and depth, which is there in India's cooperation with pretty much almost all the countries of the region, um, actually uh, is, is, is a very strong and positive story in itself. And uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, our, uh, our links with, Israel, with Egypt are civilizational. Are, um, and our relationships go back to, uh, you know, we are celebrating 75th year of our uh, bilateral ties. If you look at our history, 
um, and even if you look at our recent history, let's say post-2014, our engagement has actually been, uh, I mean, this is the third state visit of uh, the Egyptian president. Uh, large number of ministerial uh, visits I spoke to you about. Uh, the extent of uh, uh, partnership that the two countries have in the field of uh, trade, technology, tourism, and capital. Uh, Egyptian invitation to participate in the G20 presidency. Egyptian participation also in the recently held Voice of Global South Summit. Uh, uh, for us, uh, uh, Egypt is among uh, one of the key strategic partners of that region, but we also enjoy very strong and robust partnership with the region as a whole. So I, I, I really don't see uh, you know, one against or one versus the other. It's one stands in its positivity and strength in itself and uh, what we do with others stands on itself. Thank you. Manush, I missed you last time. So this is Manush Pratimbuyan from Press Trust of India. Um, my question is just related to Pranay's question. Uh, Egypt has been reeling under a massive uh, economic crisis and they're facing especially food crisis. And last year we sent around 61,000 tons of wheat uh, and uh, lifting uh, some restrictions. And uh, has uh, the Egyptian president shot further wheat from India to deal with uh, the fruit food crisis that Egypt has been facing, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't pick up the last part of your question. Sure. After the 60, 61,000 tons of has, wheat has, in board? Has President Sisi sought more wheat this ah, time? Okay. Okay. And economic uh, yeah, assistance. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Shashank Matu from the Mint. Uh, so, Mint. Mint. Uh, so, India has been making much of an outreach to West Asia in recent times, and with organizations like the I2U2, much of the focus is also on economic investment and on food security. Uh, is there Egypt and UAE also have good ties? Are we looking to make something of a trilateral conversation with UAE on economic investment? Is there trilateral with Egypt? Uh, or with UAE, oh, UAE and Egypt to talk about these questions or integrate Egypt into I two U two's conversation? Yes. Uh, uh, this is Yeshi Seli from the New Indian Express. So, was there any talk of uh, trade in rupee, uh, considering the fact that Nigeria and Tanzania are already trading uh, in Indian rupee? So, Thank you. So, Heather from the Hindu. Uh, just to add to Shashank's question, uh, since you mentioned Israel, I think inadvertently, um, the, uh, the the idea of Egypt actually taking an interest in Indian defense systems, in equipment, in that uh, strategic uh, part, is that something that will require India to have a conversation? A trilateral conversation or otherwise with its other big defense partner in the region, which is Israel. Uh, also, does the joint statement include uh, um, uh, any part on uh, the Palestinian people? Uh, and a small question, if I may, on yes. yeah. uh, on on uh, the visits. You know, uh, an Indian prime minister has not visited Egypt since 2009. Um, is it, and I think Prime Minister Modi missed going in 2020 due to COVID. He was supposed to go last year for the COP27, but he wasn't able to. Uh, so are we expecting him to go before Ms., uh, President Sisi comes back for the G20? And, and last question, what? Akhilesh. Akhilesh. Sir, I'm Akhilesh Suman from Sansad TV. Uh, you know, sir, Egypt also holds a Suez Canal. And uh, is there any Sorry, plan please. that uh, India and Egypt uh, are going to cooperate in security uh, issues related to Suez Canal or any economic uh, activity around Suez Canal? Because last year, we had signed an MOU of $8 billion about uh, green hydrogen. So what is the status of that? Sorry, your question was the Suez Canal or green Suez, hydrogen? Suez Canal. So no, green hydrogen. No. Sorry, we're running, running out of time, so I'll close here. Okay. Let me just come to the, uh, the last question which you asked on the green hydrogen. Uh, to our understanding, uh, there have been uh, two or three MOUs between the companies in India and Egypt. It's not a government to government uh, uh, agreement or MOU which has been
human design according to our understanding uh, the information that is available with us uh, uh, which uh, you can cross validate uh, there might be some error in numbers uh, roughly close to 18 billion dollars worth of uh, uh, project proposals on which the private companies have entered into uh, some kind of an understanding uh, to invest in Egypt, uh, 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 we will see how that part unfolds going forward. On the PTI question relating to the uh, food crisis, the um, and uh, as I as I mentioned to you uh, in my remarks also, the challenges of food, fertilizer, and energy security, and how do India and Egypt come together to ensure that the supply challenges that we face in each of this space uh, could be addressed through bilateral cooperation was an important element of discussions uh, between the two leaders. Uh, naturally, uh, how would uh, this cooperation translate into meeting specific elements of security, let's say of food in this case, including wheat, as my colleague just mentioned, it also includes non-basmati rice, in case of fertilizer, the phosphatic fertilizers, which is India's need, and Egypt have strong capacities in this field. All this uh, did uh, come up uh, during conversation, and uh, we would expect that in weeks and months ahead, the systems on the two sides will carry forward this discussion and uh, translate it into specific understandings between the two countries. Uh, I, uh, you know, the IT, I2U2 part uh, and this, uh, uh, we have spoken about this and frankly discussed also at some length in our previous presses also. Uh, I2U2's principal driving force, the momentum, is economic. Focuses on specific economic project. The discussion uh, which the two leaders had today President of Egypt and uh, Prime Minister of India focused on the full range of our strategic cooperation, uh, not just the elevation of relationship uh, to strategic partnership, but also uh, specific elements under it. I uh, described at some length uh, four sub pillars under that of political security, economic, science, and technology, and also the people to people linkages. Uh, I really don't uh, uh, see how uh, I2U2 project-based cooperation, which stands on its own merit, which uh, relies on India's cooperation with each of the countries involved in I2U2, and uh, how India and Egypt cooperation, which is, as I said, very robust and dynamic, extensive as you can uh, make it out yourself. Uh, uh, they both stand on their own merit, really. Uh, Going forward, uh, you know, nature of cooperation is such that it evolves. So we'll see how it evolves into what shape it takes in terms of uh, whether there is a scope in our bilateral ties to interface with the other countries of the region, etc. It would depend, of course, uh, on individual domains also of the of the cooperation. Uh, trade in rupees, uh, uh, trade, uh, sorry, not trade in rupees, but rupee settlement of bilateral trade, really. Uh, look, when we talk of economic engagement, uh, it is very natural to look at all the process-based solutions, process-based methodologies, which can give boost to such trade. If going forward in our discussions, we find out that rupee settlement can give it a boost and it is our effort, uh, it is our endeavor, it is uh, a strong line of our objective uh, to try and see that uh, uh, international trade that India does uh, increasingly if it can get settled in some geographies in rupee based uh, 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 denominations then to pursue that. Of course there is a, there is a, there is a uh, a complex mix of uh, regulatory guidance, process-based solutions, and on-the-ground implementation between the banking community and the trading community for all this to converge together and translate itself into specific rupee-based settlement of the 
trade platform. So that is something which, you know, the two systems would continue to discussion, but it is our effort to, to, to pursue that. Uh, so Ashni, your question on the India-Egypt uh, defense cooperation. Uh, first of all, uh, what is there in the joint statement? What is not there in the joint statement? I think you will see when the joint statement comes out tomorrow evening. But on the very limited element of uh, India-Egypt defense cooperation and its uh, three or four or actually five sub-segments that I mentioned, which is uh, exercises, training, uh, equipment, platforms, and more importantly, how industries, industry to industry uh, cooperation in this field. I think that stands purely on a bilateral merit and would be pursued as such really in the bilateral space. Uh, Sansit's TV question has already answered. Thank you. Visit. Ah, my apologies. <laughs> The yeah, as, ball that no, you have no, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, as you yourself mentioned, Prime Minister Modi was due to travel to Egypt in uh, 2020, but uh, we all know the uh, the pressure, pressure and the uh, tragic compulsions of COVID, you know, which uh, which which hit the entire world at that time, and uh, so that couldn't materialize. It is uh, our effort. Uh, Prime Minister was very clear that uh, it would be his uh, priority um, uh, to ensure that uh, he uh, travels to Egypt as soon as the uh, dates and the dates, etc., can be scheduled between the two countries. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining this special media briefing. Uh, thank you also to Secretary Dr. Asif Saeed, uh, Ambassador.